yes okay yeah. okay okay yeah yeah so i was talking about this eclipse ide so for those who are not uh, used to eclipse ide this is how it looks on the left side you will see the project explorer where you will see all those projects that you have opened uh, in eclipse ide on the bottom side you will see the console window tab so whatever execution that happens uh, the whatever print statements that you uh, add in your java code that will be displayed over here and then there are problems or debug shell tabs that we would you know see whenever we require it and uh, um, you know this is the run command so if you want to run okay uh, guys please go on mute you know uh, you know if you are not speaking go, please go on mute okay so this is the run button where you can just run a particular java uh, you know uh, class method uh, this is the debug method uh, sorry debug uh, you know icon where you can debug a particular java code as well so we will see all of these uh, as and when we progress so now if i have to start you know like for example if you have opened up eclipse ide on your machine okay and uh, if you want to start writing java code right so you need to go to file new project okay so here you will see java folder under it and uh, inside that you will see java project so just click on it click on next so you will come to this particular window where you have to give a you know project name okay so you can give any logical name that you want uh, you know let's you know start with maybe day 1 or whatever you want to give and uh, you can click on finish uh, hello hello okay so it will ask whether you want to create a new module uh, you know we don't really need it so just click on don't create uh, click on no and as you can see day one folder the project folder has been created uh, on the left side okay so this is very simple how to create a java project okay so i hope there is no question to it it's just simple file new project and java project that's it give a name and just click finish the java project will be created in your eclipse id so now if you see here if hello. you yeah hello yes yeah, sorry to interrupt yeah 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 uh, will you please wait for some time my eclipse is getting open <laughs> uh okay so once okay. it gets open successfully then we can if you don't mind yeah i mean let's wait for 2 minutes since you have asked uh but you know uh you know if it takes more than that probably we will miss out on uh, the topics that we are planning to cover but i hope uh, you have understood what i have mentioned you know on how to create a java yeah. project right yes. so it's file yes. new and project yes. Yes. yeah so yes. yeah i'll just for now i'll just okay. start with theory, theory uh, until you uh, your eclipse id is open okay so don't worry about it so here uh, you okay. can see a default some folders are created under your java project there is this jre uh, java runtime environment system library that gets created okay so uh, these are nothing but all the java built in uh, you know functions that are there available uh, which gets associated with your project okay so these are useful for us to you know uh, compile our java project or java code okay so this comes by default okay so when you uh, download java and when you install java on your machine and when you open eclipse id and you know create a java project all those java jre system library files will automatically get associated with your project okay so this is as simple as that then uh, there is a src folder which we call as source folder okay so this source folder is where you are going to you know add your java file okay so the different java files that we are going to use you have to create it under this folder okay so uh, i will click on uh, i will just right click on this project uh, sorry right click on this folder new and i can say class so what is interface and all that stuff we will again see in you know subsequent sessions whenever we will have so for now just understand that i right clicked on that folder i clicked on new and i you know came to this particular class option 
so uh, java okay before i start this as well i just wanted to give you a brief idea of what java is so java is a programming language you know i'm sure all of you know this okay so it is owned by oracle it's an open source uh, you know uh, programming language so you can download it for free from the website java website and this particular uh, programming language is the most widely used language by developers and even you know the automation testers so uh, using java you can create mobile app you can uh, create games you can create different applications you can develop websites so majority of the application website that is being used uh, in the today's world it is mostly you know a java based uh, application okay so it is that popular why it is popular because you know it is uh, using a concept of object oriented programming so we call it as oop you know uh, o a double op object oriented programming system okay so we will touch base on what is oops uh, in detail uh, maybe tomorrow so just to give an idea so oop is basically uh, you know it comprises of classes objects and methods okay so for java code to be executed you need to create a class first okay so without class you will not be able to write any java code okay so that is one thing so that is the reason why i had right click the src folder i went to new and i selected new java class okay so now here uh, you can give any name a logical name to your uh, java class file okay so probably i can say i don't know what should i name uh, practice one which says uh, the use of default package is discouraged uh, okay so your package okay so package is nothing but you can say a subfolder or whatever so you can say java training practice one so there is an option to select modifier public private protected abstract final etc so what are these modifiers again this is part of uh, the oop concept which again i will touch base tomorrow uh, then i think just add a package name add a class name okay and just click on finish okay very simple so as you can see the java uh class has been created so this is the file name class file name practice1.java okay and automatically a class name has been created uh, a class is created with the same name as the file name so this is again one important thing that you need to note in order for java uh you know uh, file to execute the file name and the class name should be exactly the same so it cannot happen that you know i have a different uh, you know class name which doesn't match the the java file name so it will not execute okay so in fact it will also throw you an error saying that either rename the file to so and so or rename the class name to you know whatever practice one or things like that okay so this is advantage of using an ide like eclipse so whatever error you know programming or you know uh, error that you do mostly it will highlight you you know at that particular point itself okay so uh, i hope uh, i don't know who uh, mehir are you done with your eclipse yes yes now you can continue yeah. okay okay Thank fine you. so now let's start so again there's one more important uh, thing that i have to mention here is that for java code to execute there has to be a main method uh you know main method should exist in that particular java class so as the name suggest main okay so it is a main method or you can say uh, the most important method and that is the place from where java code will trigger okay there might be multiple methods uh, in in a class but there has to be at least one main method okay so that would be the trigger point for the java code to execute so now what is method and you know uh, what exactly it is so just you know uh, be patient you know i will cover that again in the oop concept but for now you know just try to understand you know these keywords class methods etc we will cover in oop concept anyways tomorrow okay so yeah so now uh, this is a class 
and now as i said we have to have a main method okay so how do i create a main method so i will say public static void main again these are all keywords so as you can see these are colored in a you know a different color you know i think it is a purple or pink i don't know what but so it's a, it's a different color right so this indicates that these are keywords okay whereas this practice one java training whatever i have given these are not keywords okay so that is why it is uh, being uh, displayed in normal black okay whereas the other one which are keywords are highlighted in uh, purple or pink color okay so public static void main so this is the method name main and so this is a syntax okay so you just have to write as it is so there is no other way you can write a main method okay whereas other methods you can use whatever name you want but this is a a, a mandatory uh, syntax for writing a ma main method so yeah so public static void main and it accepts a argument or a parameter which is a string array and this is how you define it string capital s uh, you know in uh, two you know square brackets and then args you know that denotes arguments okay so now what is arrays what are arguments again uh, you know we will cover it you know in the subsequent session okay so just be patient again i am reiterating the same so now this is the main method that i have created public static void so each of these keyword denotes certain thing okay just to give a very high level background so public basically means that it can be accessed this particular main method can be accessed by any other different class okay and you know it can be accessed by any other methods within this class also so it as the name suggests it is public right it is open for all so this particular method denotes that it is accessible across this particular project that i have created day one okay static means you need not create an object of this class okay again this might be sounding very uh, you know you you are not able to understand this at this particular time but you know i will uh, you know explain you in the oop concept so static basically means you can uh, you don't have to create an object of this class in order to access this method okay just for the timing just understand as is i will explain you later on so you understood what is public you understood what is static at least theoretically void void again it means according to english definition void means nothing right empty you know so void basically in this particular uh, context it indicates that it does not return any value okay so uh, this particular method will not return anything to the end user okay or, or the uh, you know the compiler so it is not going to return any value okay so that is the indication that it is a void keyword so you know there is no value that is going to be returned from this particular method so let's say if i have to return any value let's say i have to return a number which is an integer right so in that case instead of void i will mention it as int okay but now main method always should be void so i would keep it as as is okay so i've just given you a very high level understanding of these three keywords main is a method you know which is the method name you can give any name but since the syntax of the main method is as this you have to write it as it is okay so i have actually taken a lot of time explaining this but yeah it was important for you to start with okay so this is the starting point of java execution in this particular class okay so now i will write a simple print method just to make you understand how this execution works okay so for printing a particular uh, method uh, value you know on the console you know again there is a syntax that needs to be followed okay so the syntax is system dot so system is again a class okay just like how we are creating a class called as practice one right so similarly there are some inbuilt java class created by java developers okay 
so system is again a inbuilt class so if you have a class and if you press dot after that class okay you will be then able to access the methods inside that class like for example now you have created a class practice one right and you have a method called as main over here right so if i have to access this main method i can you know create an object of this class practice one and then i can access this main method by using a dot okay so how to do that again i will explain later but just to make you understand what this system is i'm just giving you a background so system is an inbuilt java class okay you can see over here also you know in the id it tells you what this particular is it is a class java dot lang dot system okay so it is a class and when i click on dot i am able to access all the methods that the java developers have written inside this system class okay so each method has certain function that it performs okay so now if i have to print a particular value right so if you can see over here there is a method or inside this system called as out okay so i will use this system dot out out is a key uh, short form of output okay system dot out dot again inside this out i want to use a keyword called as print ln okay so and ln print ln has a, bra a parenthesis you know around parenthesis and inside this you can print any value that you want so if you want to print a particular text so then that value should be enclosed in you know double quotes okay so like for example the classic thing that we print for the first time is always hello world right so let's follow that so system dot out dot print ln in you know in parenthesis double quotes i am printing this value okay and always a java statement will end with a semicolon okay so this is again a syntax so if you don't write this semicolon ide will give you an error and it will also tell you what you need to do to fix it okay so this is the beauty of using a ide like eclipse okay so now you have written this met, uh, you know statement system dot out dot print ln hello world so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on this run button okay and what it is going to do it is basically you know going to print you the value in the console as you can see here console it has printed hello world okay so very basic very basic nothing no rocket science you know anybody can understand this right i, I guarantee you if you attend these sessions as the these practice sessions you know eventually no matter how you know uh, amateur you may be in java i don't know some of you are already experts some might be better than me as well i am not claiming that i am a java expert but whatever i know if you are a amateur at least i will get you to my you know uh, level of knowledge at the end of these java sessions okay so just be patient and just follow what i'm trying to explain okay so this is what uh, you know java um, you know system dot out dot print ln will do okay so now what is ln so ln basically means a new line okay so now if i want to say uh, okay let me try let me show you this okay let me print copy paste the same stuff uh, and let me print something else just to explain what this ln is going to do uh i'll click on run practice again so now if you see in the console there are three statements that have been printed and each of these three statements have been printed in a new line okay so now if i let's say remove this ln from the first print statement okay and now let me try rerunning it so now you will see the difference so now what has happened after printing this particular statement right hello world since i have not used ln over here the next print will happen in the same line as this okay so hello world and my name is rahul has been printed in the same line whereas since i have used ln over here you know for the second statement 
the third st- the third the third uh, you know print value has been printed in the next line okay so this is the difference of print and println okay so again very basic you know i i am sure you don't have any questions right if you have probably you can ask but you know i don't think you should have any questions uh, for this okay there are still people joining uh, okay anyways let's move ahead so uh, yeah so java i just gave you what java you know just a brief introduction of it class method name main method okay system out print print ln okay so we have covered this uh, then there is something called as variable okay so what is a variable okay variable basically is nothing but you know it is a placeholder there are still people joining huh? okay so a uh, variable is nothing but a placeholder okay a placeholder in your computer's memory you know which will store a particular value okay a placeholder in a uh, system memory which will store value okay whatever value you give to that variable it is going to store a value in it okay and what is uh, another characteristic of variable is that its value can be changed at run time okay change or what you call you know its value can vary okay so you know the english word you know vary basically means the value can change right so that is why it is called as variable from this word vary okay so now let let us see what is a variable and how do we declare a variable how do we you know initialize a value to that variable right so we will see that now so let's say uh, i want to store a text value in a particular variable okay so how do i declare a variable first so to declare a variable i have to tell the java compiler that what kind of uh, data i am going to store in that variable you know so data is data right so it can be text it can be uh, numbers it can be boolean like true false you know there are so many types of data isn't it so how how would the java compiler understand what to do with that data or what kind of data am i you know providing okay so to help the java compiler understand what kind of data i am going to store there is a concept called as data type again i am going to touch that topic in in a while so to declare a variable i need to mention the keyword of that particular data type so let's say i'm going to store a text value okay so a text is nothing but a string right so a string variable a uh, data type is written like this with capital s okay and java by the way is case sensitive okay so if s is capital is supposed to be capital then you have to write it as capital it cannot be uh, uh, you know a lower case or any other type of case right so if you see if i make, you know make that s small it is giving me an error correct so so it is a case sensitive programming language okay so now i have declared the data type so now java compiler understand okay i am going to give some text value to that particular variable okay so data type space then the uh, variable name so variable name can be anything okay but it is uh, preferable to give a logical name to your variable if you can give x y z that is fine you know it will be accepted but as a good you know coding practice it is always recommended to give a logical name to your uh, uh, variable okay so i will say uh, name okay so this name of employee or whatever okay and i will add a semicolon so what is this this is nothing but a uh, uh, a variable declaration declaration of a variable okay now let's say int age of employee okay then uh, i can say what else uh, again a string or maybe a double sal 
of employee okay salary right so what i've basically done is i have created three variables with three different types of value that i'm going to store in it so for the first i am going to store a text value so that is why the data type is string the second one i'm going to store an integer value or a numerical value so that is why it is int and salary can be you know in decimals also you know for example just for this example purpose so then i'm using a you know a uh, a uh, uh, data type as double okay okay let me get my charger laptop charger just give me a minute Okay, so uh, now what I'm going to do is this is the uh, uh, variable declaration part. Now I'm going to initialize. Okay, uh, initialize value to these variables. So what do I mean by initialize? Basically, I'm going to give some value to the variable that I've already declared. Okay, so now I will say name m the variable that I've created equal to let's say John. Okay. then age whatever 25 and salary that's it okay so now this is declaration part this is initialization of the variable all right so now let's say if i want to print the name of this employee what i can do is i can either print it as a text over here you know like instead of hello world i will say john right or you can also use the variable name itself now that this particular value is getting stored in this variable so rather than you know hard coding this value in this print statement i can directly use the variable name over here without double quotes obviously because it is not a text anymore it is a, a variable right so i have to give the variable name over here and similarly i can give you know the rest of the variables to print as well okay so now this is how you declare a variable initialize it and you can also print the value of it using the print statement so you can also run the java class by right clicking the class run as java application okay so now if i execute this as you can see it is printing the value that is stored in the variable so the first one it is john second the age it is getting printed as 25 and then the salary whatever i have mentioned it is getting printed over here okay so now there is again another thing in a variable declaration is that you can declare multiple variables of the same data type you know in single line for example uh, i can say uh you know uh int number of uh, experience okay number of yeah number of experience of that particular person it can be an integer so i can simply add a semicolon and add a variable new variable uh, ahead of this okay so this is again a different type of declaring a variable and uh, you can also declare and initialize the value of the variable in the same line so for example here i have declared a variable and then i have initialized it over here right i might as well do the same in single line so it can be like this okay so i am declaring it as well as initializing it in the same line okay so this also is valid and it can be uh, you know it is it is a uh, you know valid uh, code so there's nothing error in it okay now another thing that you can add in this print statement is that you can concatenate concatenate meaning you can uh, join two things in the print statement so now for example here it is accepting only this variable right name m 
now let's say if i have to make it a more logical print statement right so what i would do is uh name of the employee is okay so this is a hard coded text that I, I want to print and then this is the variable okay so now if i have to join this text with this variable which we call it as concatenation i have to use a plus statement okay so now what basically it is going to print is that this text is going to get printed and it is going to add this variable value against it okay so now if i execute this from here you know as expected it it has printed this text name of the employee is and then whatever name i give in this variable it is getting printed over here okay now let's say i want to change the value of this variable at runtime right i i told you right the variable is having a feature that its value can be changed at runtime right so i can again use the same variable name and i can say i have changed the value over here okay. and let me print it over here as well, twice now let's see what happens okay so first it is john so it will print the value as john then in the next line i have printed or i have changed the value of that variable to some other you know text and now if it prints obviously it should print the updated value of that variable right so just to confirm i will execute this so first it printed name of the employee is john and then it printed name of the employee is alex right so this is what i mean by the value of the variable can be changed at runtime okay so this was about a uh, variable uh, declaration initialization and printing the variable itself okay so i hope you know it's pretty simple and you don't have any questions uh, if you have any questions probably uh, yeah I, i don't think anybody has a question right it's pretty basic so I, I, you will probably get question uh, you know you will have some questions maybe you know in the next session that we will start tomorrow so this was just a basic stuff okay so let's move ahead uh, we have data types to cover what is primitive data type and non primitive data type so again data type i just explained you what data type is and what is the need of data type so in order for java compiler to understand you know what kind of data that i have provided whether it is a string or a integer or whatever the data type will indicate that particular you know what kind of data it is right so i have already explained here you know what is a string data type what is integer double right so again as uh, i have mentioned in this uh, notes i will just copy paste it over here and we will see what it is okay okay by the way uh, there is also something called as comment okay comments are very important in your programming uh, you know uh, scenario why because you know in a project in a real time project there are multiple people working on a module okay let's say in an automation project i am automating certain number of test cases of a module and there is some other person who is also automating some other test cases in the same module okay so who has written what piece of code it is very important for us to understand as well as to you know add certain certain uh, information of what that particular code is doing okay so for example uh, i would say you know like this uh, this code will uh, store value in a variable and print it okay so this is what i am trying to explain what this particular code is going to do okay however if i write it like this it is going to throw me an error saying that you know java doesn't understand what you have written right and i don't expect java to even understand or compile this code right i don't want java to you know execute this code it is just for you know my understanding or someone else's understanding who would review this code right so in order to Uh, you know add this particular kind of statement without getting this executed we have to just add you know two forward slashes okay 
So this will basically indicate that this is not an executable piece of code, but this is a comment. Okay, a single line comment, right? So Java will not execute this code or this line of code. It will move to the next one. Okay. Then there is also what we call as uh, multi-line comments. Okay. Now let's say there are these two lines which are nothing but for you know our understanding purpose. So what I will do is I can either do double quotes for both the lines over here, or you know I can simply say forward slash and an asterisk at the in the beginning and end it with an asterisk and a forward slash. So this will become a multi-line comment. Okay, so comments are very, very important. You know, most of the times, you know, I, I have experienced, you know, while I review, uh, you know, uh, the automation code of my team members, I have noticed that they use, they don't use comments that frequently. So I, I generally, you know, give my review comments that you should add comments, which is very, very important. Okay, so anyways, uh, going ahead with the data types. So there are different types of data and for that there are different types of uh, data types. Okay, so byte, short, int, long, float, double. Okay, so these are uh, data types to store numeric values. Okay, so the smallest numeric value can be stored in byte. A little bigger but still smaller value of an int, you know, new uh, number can be stored in a short then obviously int there is there then there is long float and double okay nothing great about it it is just that the kind of uh, you know uh, extent of data numeric data it can store it is you know based on that so a smaller piece of new uh, in, in a number can be stored in byte and it increases accordingly okay so this is about it and how do i store long float and double uh, I'll just tell you so double I think you have already seen over here so double you know it is simple there is additional just for this long and float I'll tell you how it is so for long if I say LNG number and equal to okay, I will just add a uh, sorry I will just add L you know uh, the alphabet L uh, at the end and I will add a semicolon so for adding a value for a long variable you have to add the data type as long as well as you have to mention a character L in the end okay so there is a little difference for this long as well as for a float so floating point number okay so float flt num equal to it will end with a f Okay, so this is a minor difference for long and float as compared to the other numeric data type. Okay, rest of the thing remains the same for any numeric uh, data type, right? Uh, then we have uh, Boolean and character. So Boolean is basically nothing but true or false, right? So Boolean, uh, whatever, you know, like uh, answer, correct. I'm just giving some random variable name so it can be either true okay or uh, hello it can be false yeah sorry to interrupt uh, sir yeah Mir. yeah actually i'm getting one error that um, uh, i have declared one variable age okay so i'm getting one error that it cannot be resolved to a variable uh can you share your screen for a minute i mean uh, let's see okay. there must be some basic error that you must have done i'm sure yeah i think so <laughs> yeah can you share yeah yeah one minute i'm i'm getting Yeah, I have said. Are you able to see my? Yes, screen? yes, 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 yes. Okay, so uh, basically, what I understand is that you have not mentioned the data type, Mir. 
so you have just given uh, the variable name right uh, age lm uh, whatever that is can you okay, give okay okay yeah yeah, yes, yes, yeah. i got it Go yeah 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 so that was uh okay so let's let's come back to the topic uh, i'm sharing my screen now uh, i hope it is visible to you uh, is my screen visible now no yeah okay so i was talking about boolean so boolean basically stores either true or false if you give any other value let's say 1 2 3 you know it is giving you an error why because it is a type mismatch you know a uh, boolean cannot store anything apart from uh, true or false okay so Sorry, that was about boolean not visible to me It's Sorry visible uh, you have to pin the the screen I have a screen here in the longer, uh, I mean larger screen. It is showing smaller only. Yeah, it is visible in smaller size. A pin that screen. Pin pin that is a uh, small screen. Uh, then it. Uh, my screen is visible, right, guys? Yes. Yeah, please. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So I'll proceed. You know, uh, since I'm running short of time, uh, I'll try to cover whatever I can for today. So uh, the boolean value I have mentioned. Then there is something called a char. so char is nothing but it is going to store a single character or a single letter okay so for example uh, char uh, letter you know again i'm giving some random variable name it doesn't make sense but just to explain so character will be mentioned in single quotes not in double quotes double quote uh, you know quotes is used for storing string value but for char it is single quotes and you can st store only a single letter to it okay so this is about char so all these types are primitive data type what i mean by primitive is that it is actually a data type an inbuilt data type and it doesn't have any methods or anything of that sort it is simple pure pure vanilla kind of thing just storing value okay nothing more to it however there is there are other data types which are called as non primitive data types in this there are three data types string arrays and classes okay so a uh, string although i mentioned it over here you know it, it is actually a class okay so i'll tell you again what this class is so class as i said there are different methods yeah, yeah. inside that yeah, class yeah, right so again in string people. we have different methods that we are going to see in you know, a short span of time so these uh, uh, string arrays and classes are data types but those are non primitive data types that can be modified by uh, the end user okay so just you know you can understand that there are two types of data primitive and non primitive and in primitive it is byte short int long float double which stores numeric values boolean stores true or false and character stores only a single letter okay in in single quotes and now we will see what is string arrays and classes okay so um, and before that yeah i have to show you what is widening casting and narrowing casting okay so yeah so the smallest numeric data data type as i mentioned is byte and then it is short and then it is int long so on and so forth right so if i if i have to store a byte number in a short data type you know it accepts automatically okay so let's say i have a capacity to store a big number right so i can store a big number and i can store you know i might as well store a smaller number also right so there is no problem in it right however if i have to store a big number in a smaller container then i have to do some changes which is called as narrowing casting and that i have to do it manually so again i will show you what i am talking about maybe it doesn't make sense theoretically i'll explain it to you okay so uh yeah so let's say uh i have a okay again let's go here so int is a smaller data type and double is the largest right so let us see so i have created this int uh which is age employee and double you know is a salary which is a bigger number right so now i have used this value age m to store this integer uh, value 25 isn't it 
so now what if i do something like this okay just for your understanding uh if i store this integer variable which has this value integer in a variable called as sal employee which is actually a double data type right so an integer value is getting stored in a double uh data type variable and it is allowing me to do so you know it has not given me any error and if i have to uh you know print now sal emp okay you know it will also print the value of it okay i will show you that so i am printing this variable sal salary employee which is actually a double data type right but it is printing me the value which i had given to an integer variable okay so double has the capacity of holding a larger number right but it also stores the smaller version of numeric value as well so the widening or you know uh, widening casting happens automatically i don't have to do anything from my end to in order for a double to store the smaller data type values it happens automatically okay however if i have to do it the other way right so let's say if i have to do it something like this 500.34 is my value in this double data type and age which is an integer you know it is expecting me to store only integer value right so now what what if i do something like this the other way i will say uh yeah so now i am storing a double data type value in an integer data type variable okay so it is giving me an error so if i hover my mouse on that particular error it also gives me three quick fixes so what does it say it says change the data type of age m to double or change the data type of sal m to integer okay so these are two choices or the third choice is that add a cast to integer okay so now what i am going to do is that i am going to convert the value of this variable sal employee which is actually of double data type i am converting it to an integer so that this particular variable will be able to store this value are you getting my point uh if there is any confusion let me know this is a little complex but very easy actually so just take an example of a container right so if i have a smaller container i cannot store a big number into it right or a big uh, object inside it right so i have to either truncate it and then store it right so this is what it is actually being done over here so it is i have to manually convert the double data type into an integer and then store it over here okay so now if i say if i print age employee this particular value okay what is the value of sal employee 500.34 right and i have converted it into an integer and i have stored it in that integer variable and now i am going to print the same value of that integer variable over here so do you know what it will print will it print 500.34 you know let's check out okay no 500 it will print correct correct yeah whoever answered you are correct so it will print 500 why because integer variable uh, data type does not accept decimals okay so it has truncated the value so that it can accept the data type which is matching integer right however the other way round there was no such problem you know because the container was large and it was easily able to store you know small value in it okay so this was about uh, widening and narrowing of uh, data uh, actually i don't know google meet allows only 1 hour of a session right so i don't know probably this meeting might end uh, can anybody guide me how do i open the same meeting using the same link actually i am not well versed with google meet any idea how to how to do that you 
can rejoin you that. You have to uh, create a new uh, link. You can rejoin that link. Okay, it will not end. Okay, somebody saying it will not end. If it doesn't end, great. And uh, if it ends, I will try to, uh, you know, open the same link. Okay, just in case in the same link doesn't work. And if I have to uh, create a new link, I will post a new link in the post again. Okay, so I will do that. So, okay, somebody saying it doesn't end, right? So then it's yes. great. Yeah, so we will continue. Actually, I had planned to cover by nine, but since today is the starting day, I went a little slow. So whoever has any other commitments can, you know, drop the meeting. You know, there is no pressure. Okay. So feel free to drop whoever wants to, but I'll try to cover a little few more topics. I may not be able to cover everything, but I'll try to cover as much as I can. So I hope this is understood, you know, the widening and narrowing of casting any questions, anyone before I move to the next topic. Okay, I take it as a no, I will move to the next, which is operators. Okay, so operators, I will explain in some different class. Okay, so again, I will create a new class. Right click new class, I can say operators. And I can also use this inbuilt you know, it says which method would you like to create? You know, it will automatically create this public static void main for me because I anyways have to write it, right? So I might as well just select this checkbox. I click on finish. And now operators class file has been created with this public static void main method already created. Okay. So yeah, so now we will see different types of operators. Let's start with uh, arithmetic operators. Okay. So again, th these are basic stuff. Okay. I, no rocket science. You know, we have been doing this from school days and college. Just that how Java does it. This is what we have to understand. So arithmetic operators, what are the different types of arithmetic operators? Addition, then we have uh, subtraction, then we have division, then we have uh, multiplication, right? Uh, then we have something called as uh, modulus, which is a percentage sign. So modulus is nothing but when you divide two numbers, whatever whatever remains as a remainder, that will be the value that would be returned. Okay. So we will very quickly see what and how this functions. It's very simple. So let's say, uh, yeah, I will create two uh, variables, a comma b. Again, not the best of ways to uh, you know create uh, what do you say a variable name but yeah you can go for now with this uh, why it is giving me an error a comma syntax error to complete block statements okay yeah so I have created two variables a comma b now I will store value A will store 10, uh, B will store let's say 3, okay. And now I will very quickly, you know, use this arithmetic operators. So, sys out. So instead of writing system dot out dot print ln, the, you know, the long way, what you can do is simply you will say sys out and then press control and space bar it will automatically, you know, print the entire statement for you. Okay. So this is just a small uh, hack kind of thing. And now what I'll do is I will just mention addition is, uh, okay. addition is concatenate A plus B. Okay. What I'm basically going to do is it is going to print addition is and then whatever the addition value 10 plus 3 obviously 13 it is going to print that okay similarly I'll just quickly copy paste for the rest of the operators so one is minus subtraction multiplication uh, division and then obviously the modulus okay so subtraction 
मल्टीप्लीकेशन डिविजन रिमाइंडर ओके सो लेट अस सी एग्जीक्यूट दिस वेरी क्विकली Okay, so it has printed exactly what is the expected answer. So addition is obviously ten plus three, thirteen. Th Subtraction is ten minus three, seven. Multiplication thirty. Division three. Okay, why three? Because it is not going to return you three point three 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 three. Why? You know, because it is an integer. You remember integer, right? So it will automatically concatenate, and it will print only three. Okay, because if you divide. Ten by three, it supposed to be you know printing you value like three point three 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 something like that, right? But since you have uh, you no know, integer value, it has printed you only three. Then remainder, obviously, if you divide ten by three, what remains is one, right? So it has printed you one. So these are nothing but arithmetic operators. Again, pretty straightforward, right? So let's move to the next assignment operator. so assignment operator is nothing but we have already used this so a equals to 10 so this is nothing but i am assigning the value 10 to the variable a right using this particular uh, you know equal to sign okay so that is assignment operators okay i don't even have to explain separately you already have seen it uh, there are a little variation that you can uh, try uh, which is i believe i think so it, it is something like this i have forgotten yeah so what this statement does is that okay let me show you this very quickly system dot out dot print ln okay so what i have done is variable a is already there which has the value 10 okay so this is done by using the assignment operator equal to now what i have done is i have said plus equal to 5 so what this is going to do is that it is going to add 5 to the already existing value of a so the answer here should be 15 okay so let me quickly execute this and show so the answer is 15 why because i have assigned you know additional of 5 to the existing value of the variable a okay so then you can play around with it so instead of addition you can use minus as a subtraction you can use multiplication you can use n number of things right so just to explain you that this is also called as assignment operator i have shown you this so again if i use minus subtraction and then equal to then obviously 10 minus 5 it is going to give you the value as 5 right so this was about assignment operators then comparison operator okay comparison operator what uh, is basically less than right less than greater than less than or equal to okay greater than equal to then this is equal to equal to basically means comparing two variables whether a is equal to b or not okay so this is if i use a single equal to it means i am assigning value to this okay but if i have to compare the value of a is equal to b or not okay in that case i have to use two double equals to sign okay and then uh, this is not not symbol means not equal to or not less than you know you can play around with these comparison operators so generally comparison operators are used in a, a conditional statement okay conditional statements are nothing but the if else statement that i am going to cover probably in the next yeah i am going to cover next right so i will show you this comparison operator along with this conditional statements but for now just try to understand there are different comparison operators which we have already you know studied in our school days and college days right so less than greater than less than equal to greater than equal to and this is equal to so we are comparing two variables whether those are equal or not and then this is a not operator which you can use uh, with the combination of the other operators so either as not equal to or not less than or not greater than you know so on and so forth right 
so this was comparison operator i will show you with the conditional statement and then logical operators uh, this is and and this is or okay again this i will show you along with comparison operator so this is nothing but and so if there are two comparisons that i have to do then i so let's say i have to say uh, if a is greater than b and a is uh, greater than 0 you know i am comparing these two uh, variables so then i will use this and operator to it so either and or you can use this or operator so i will show you in the conditional statement now so these were operators i will start with conditional statements guys i hope i am not going too fast uh, because these are very simple topics so i just want to rush a little but i hope you are you know this is making sense to you right because these are very basic these are fundamentals that you have to use because going for ahead you know we are going to use a lot of these things you know in our coding okay so i hope the basics are very clear so conditional statements so we have uh, if else statements okay and then we have something called a switch statement so you will see both of these very quickly so if else statement okay again if you know english you know what does this if else actually mean right so if a particular condition meets then you are going to do something like this else you are going to do something other okay so it 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 makes sense like that right so now let's take this example itself okay so uh, a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 3 right so now i will use the comparison operator and then i will also use logical operator to explain you what this conditional statement is okay so let's say what is the syntax for if else if in bracket i have to mention the condition so what is the condition i will say if a is greater than 5 okay if a is greater than 5 so i am going to evaluate this condition whether it is true if it is true then what i am supposed to do i am supposed to do something which i have to mention in this curly braces okay so if a is greater than 5 if this is true then i will say you know basic stuff okay i'm just going to say uh a is greater than 5 okay if it is not true okay so then what i'm going to do else so if it is false what am i supposed to do again i have to mention in a separate curly uh, you know curly braces and i will say a is not greater than 5 okay now this is just a simple print statement okay so nobody in actual uh, project we are not going to use some you know basic print statements right but this is just for you to understand what the conditional statements are i am just you know printing some basic stuff but eventually when we will go ahead we will use these if st uh, conditional statements to perform more complex uh, operations for us okay so a is greater than 5 is it greater than 5 obviously it is right because a is 10 so it should actually go in the true part and it should print this particular statement and not this one okay so now let me execute this let me comment out rest of the print statements so that there is no confusion and i will execute so yes as expected it has printed a is greater than 5 why because this particular conditional uh, comparison operator that i have used you no know, a greater than 5 so this particular condition has been met successfully or this particular condition has returned a value true that is why it has printed me this okay now let me say a is equal to 5 right so obviously what would be the answer now since the value of a is 5 is 5 greater than 5 no right it is actually equal to 5 so it will not go in this statement it will go in the else part of it and then it will print me the value as a is not greater than 5 okay so if i execute this now it will show me a is not greater than 5 right so i have shown you what is 
the if if part as well as the else part okay so now let's say i have to uh, mention uh, one more if if statement in the same uh, uh, scenario okay so what i will do is uh yeah i will say else if okay, else if a is less than 5 then print this is so now what i'm doing is instead of a simple if else i'm using two if statements over here so either a can be greater than 5 a can be less than 5 or else what is the third possible scenario it can be either greater than equal to than, or obviously a is equal to 5 right equal to 5 isn't it so now i have used two if statements over here and you know one else statement you can say logically so i am validating three conditions here a is greater than 5 or whether a is less than 5 or you know a is equal to 5 okay you can also add else if a equal to equal to 5 okay so this is also perfectly fine but you know it doesn't make sense you know because what is the third output it is equal to 5 there is no need for me to write this but even if you want to write this is also fair enough you can do that okay so this is if else statement with multiple if condition that we are validating okay so now if i execute this obviously it has not gone in the first statement it has not gone in the second statement it has gone in the third if statement which says a is equal to 5 right so remember this operator which i told you comparison operator if i have to validate two variables or if i have to validate two values then i have to use double equal to okay if it was a single equal to it is a assignment operator it is not a comparison operator right it is also giving you an error correct so for comparison two values it has to be double equal to okay so so i have basically covered the comparison operator so you can play around with less than or equal to greater than or equal to and what not okay so now i will quickly show you what is logical operators okay so let's say this okay if a is greater than 5 and uh a is uh what do you say less than 11 okay so now what i'm doing is i'm adding an and operation to validate two conditions and only if both the conditions are true it will go inside this block if either of the condition is false it will not go inside this block okay so let me you know remove the rest of the thing so that just to make you understand this pretty simple so if a is greater than 5 is it greater than 5 okay let, let's take the example where the value of a is 10 okay so so a is equal to 10 so what is the first condition a is greater than 5 so will this return me true or false it will return me true right because it is greater than 5 okay now it is an and operator and it says is a less than 11 yes it is less than 11 right so this also returns me the value as true so only if both the expressions or or condition is returning me the value as true only then it will go inside this block okay so less than 11 let's let's try to execute this yes so it has printed me this value why because both these conditions are returning the value as true and it has gone inside this statement uh, inside this block and printed this statement for me now let's make one of the expression uh, or condition as false okay so let me put the value as 12 okay so now what's going to happen is that the first expression or, or the condition is true uh 12 is greater than 5 but 12 is not less than 11 right so since i am using an and operator and since 
both the conditions are not returning in the value as true only one of the condition is returning in the value as true it will not go inside this statement uh, uh, block and it will not print anything over here so now if i execute this statement uh, code you see nothing has printed why because it has not gone inside this block now instead of and if i use or operator okay or operator if i use it so obviously you know as again or what does it signify either this or this at least one should return me the value as true if if that is returning me the value as true then it will go inside this statement and it will perform whatever i have mentioned inside the statement so in this case it is just going to print me some value right so now if i use this or operator although the statement doesn't make sense because you know a is no, uh, a the value of a is 12 and it is not less than 11 but just to make you understand what this operator is it has you know it has value evaluated the uh, this expression it is returning true and this expression is returning false but since i'm using an or operator even if one expression is returning the me the value as true it will accept it and it will go inside the uh, this block and it will do whatever i've mentioned over here in this case it has printed me the value okay so this was about logical operator and comparison operator using the conditional statements okay and i have also showed you what is uh, multiple if else if else right so uh, i have covered the operators and the conditional statements uh, if so now there is one catch for the if statement okay so now let's take an example where i am having a value guys if you have any questions feel free to uh, stop me okay so let's say i'm uh, having a variable string variable by the name day or, or uh, let's say i will have an integer value uh, okay uh, yeah integer value and number of day okay, and i'm storing the value as 1 okay so basically again this is a very basic uh, example that i'm giving to explain you what switch statement is or uh, the condition statement is so what i'm trying to do is if i have the value as 1 it should print me the value as uh, let's say sunday if it is 2 it should print me the value as monday you know so on and so forth seven days it the seven number should denote those seven different days okay so now one way is to do using the if statement right so if uh, num day equal to equal to one then this out uh, whatever sunday okay then what else again i have to do the same thing seven times right so else if num day equal to two print me monday then uh, let me just quickly copy paste this one two three four five six seven okay so three four five six seven tuesday wednesday Thursday, Friday. Sir, uh, there is the uh, dynamic variable. So, can you explain it? Sorry? Uh, dynamic variable. The variable that can change uh, during the runtime. Yeah, variable can have values that can change at runtime, yes. So, uh, what is the context of that in this example? Uh, I am not able to get. Okay, anyways, uh, I'll, I'll continue. We will come back if you have some suggestion. So, you, here what I'm trying to explain is that the difference between two conditional statements. One is the if statement that we have already seen. And then I'm going to show you uh, the, another kind of uh, conditional statement, which is a switch statement. 
okay so i'll explain uh, the difference between the two okay so now what happens is that let's say i have a value in this particular variable as 7 okay and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to debug this particular execution okay so i will also show you how to debug in eclipse okay so i've added a debug point over here okay so how do i add a debugger point just you see the blue uh, you know vertical line over here right you simply have to double click it over here for whatever line of code you want to start the debugging okay so i've added here you can see a blue kind of a dot has been created now instead of clicking on this run operator i have to click on debug operator okay so i'll click on debug so now what will happen that execution will start and it will pause at this particular point so you will see that now okay so now if you see uh, it has paused at this particular line you can see that line highlighted in uh, light green okay so now i can say step over okay step over and step into our two uh, debugging uh, you know controls that you have so i will click on step over so now what has happened is that it has gone to the next line okay num day you can also hover it and see what is the value that it has stored it is 7 okay so now i will again step over step over then again so what it is go basically doing is that it is going into each of those if statements validating the expression whether you know, uh, it is matching the value that i've given over here so it is going one two three four five six seven so it will go into each of this if statement and validate the expression okay so one by one it is going and then eventually it will find a match over here and then it will go inside this particular uh, block of code and then obviously it is going to print me the value as saturday so now what has happened here is that uh, using this multiple if else if else if else first of all it makes your code very shabby you know it is very complicated so although now this program was a very simple one so it was not so difficult to understand but in uh, you know complex code if you use multiple if else if else if else you know it makes uh, very difficult to debug and it is very uh, you know uh, you know confusing also and other thing that what i wanted to show you is that the uh, execution happens very slow you know why because it is validating every if statement one by one one by one imagine you have written multiple hundred of if else if else in your code so for every if it is going to spend some amount of time and eventually it is going to be a large time that has been wasted in execution right so to avoid that we have something called as a switch statement okay so here what happens is that here you give uh the value uh let's say this okay and here you say case one it's out monday then break okay and i'm going to repeat this I'll just explain what this code is. Let me just copy paste this real quick. So case one, case two, case three, case four, five, six, seven. Then I'll copy paste the same stuff. Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, so now I'll explain you what this is going to do and how it will uh, behave uh, differently. So now what I've done is I've used the keyword switch 
for triggering the switch statement whatever expression i want to evaluate will be given it over here num day is equal to 7 uh, the va uh, value would be given over here and then for each value 1 2 3 whatever i have to perform i have mentioned in this particular uh, you know block and this is a break keyword so again i'll explain by you know debugging so let's start with this uh, debug okay so now first of all it has come here in num day is equal to 7 so now the value has been set into num day uh, i will use step over so it has come here for the switch statement okay and now as you can see right from this particular line it has immediately jumped to case 7 it has not gone to case 1 validate whether it is matching or not then case 2 whether it is validating and matching 7 or not it has from here it has directly gone to case 7 that's it you know so it has saved a lot of execution time by you know avoiding to validate the rest of the stuff uh, are you understanding the difference when i showed you the debug for the previous one the if else one and for this one so it actually takes uh, you know it, it accepts the value what it is being stored and automatically it will figure out you know what is the matching uh, case over here so in this case it is here and it, it has gone inside this statement and it has printed me the value as whatever sunday okay so first of all uh, the code looks very neat and clean as compared to this if else if else that is one second the execution time is much much you know uh, less as compared to the if else one okay now why do we use the breaks keyword over here is that once it has gone in this particular statement i want to come out of this switch statement okay i don't want it to run to the any other line of code within the switch statement so that is why we have this break keyword and it will come out of it okay and another feature of this switch statement is that you can also have something called as a default case okay so let's say uh Valid day. Uh, is it invalid expression? Okay. Yeah, it should not be case default, it has to be only default. So, what this is going to do is that in case I have some invalid data, okay, like 10 which doesn't fit into any of these cases then automatically it will go in the default and it will print you invalid day okay so sometimes what happens in if else is that we don't figure out you know why nothing has been printed you know if if i have to give something like 10 over here you know it will not print anything for me okay so your switch statement automatically will do that for me so if it is anything invalid it will come outside into this default block and it will print me saying that invalid day okay so it is easier for you to uh, even debug okay so yeah let's let's do this once and show you oh, sorry yeah yeah invalid day you see because the value that I've entered in this particular variable is invalid, which doesn't match any of the cases that I've mentioned over here. It has by default gone in the default statement and printed me this particular line. Okay, so this was about switch statement. Uh, I think guys, uh, we will cover loops and arrays tomorrow because it will take some more time and I don't want to extend uh, too much on day one. Uh, but I hope uh, you understood whatever I have covered so far. These are the basic stuff guys so you know you know you should be pretty comfortable with it and if you have any questions i can uh, you know take probably couple of questions uh, for today anybody can unmute or maybe message on the chat window uh, uh, hello i have like one question regarding the assignment operators yeah so uh, yeah so basically when we printed out with the data like uh, uh, plus a plus uh, is equal to five, right? Yeah, this one you're saying. Yeah, this one. Yes. Yes. 
so basically uh, before that i wanted to print some data like uh, it's some uh, by this value it will be the integer okay so how can i print it the value uh, what do you want to print sorry i did not uh, get your question i wanted to enter any text before the uh, into the system out print ln acha okay so you mean uh, you wanted to print some text over here exactly so after that uh, as you told that we have to enter plus 1 to you know to uh, print the text right okay yeah so in this uh, in that case uh, it's giving me the error so how should i uh, solve it in with the bracket yeah let's see i mean i have not tried this uh, it's a good question let's try and see let me comment out the remaining piece of code okay so uh, i think the question is interesting so the assignment operator where i had mentioned you can add a minus and equal to right so he said can we add some text and concatenate it as well so you know let's give it a try okay i have not tried this earlier so basically now what ideally it should say is uh, print is that text space and then it should print uh, 12 minus 5 so it should be text space 7 okay so let's see if it works yeah so it is printing that way so probably what you must have not done is that you you must have not added this uh, bracket yes okay so yeah that that answers your question anyone else has any question uh rapid please can you share me the link to download this eclipse uh yeah yeah i think uh if you just simply actually for mac it is working uh, sorry windows it is working but uh, for mac i am uh, getting some issues so what i would suggest is that uh, there are many youtube videos also uh you know you can try over your uh, uh, eclipse installation on mac or whatever because i have a simple uh, windows uh, laptop that to a very old one so i i really don't know how it works on mac uh yeah maybe you can try some tutorials on how to install eclipse on mac you know i i am not really aware of that i'm so sorry no no problem thank you okay uh, any other question uh, related to the topics that i've covered okay uh, vivek is asking uh, where will you post the link for the next day session yaar uh, I, i don't know i mean like uh, Uh, i have actually added this as a recurrent uh, meeting so ideally the same meeting link should work uh, for the next session also right yes yes we can join with the same link yeah, okay correct. okay yeah so i think probably the same link should work tomorrow as well in case you know if it doesn't work for whatever reason i'll just add a, again a comment in that post okay so yeah vivek uh, that that's uh, that should solve your question uh hello timing will be same rahul yeah timing same uh, because actually you know uh, saturday sunday morning to evening actually i prefer to spend some time with my family so you know in the end i can have some uh, sessions along with you yeah uh, anybody has a question yeah uh, hello uh, sir this is me here yeah mir yeah so uh, uh, how will upload this recording session like uh, is it uh, you will upload in like as a uh, youtube or something again yaar i mean mir uh, to be very honest i was not very uh, i mean I, i had no intention to uh, record this video as well or put it on uh, youtube i don't have a youtube channel or anything of that sort but since lot of comments had come to me saying that record the video record the video yeah. so i have done it uh, as you can see the recording is still happening uh yeah. i will i will see how i can uh, share that <coughs> link i think youtube would be better you know so yeah i will do that mir i'll i'll try to do that yeah okay 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 yes because it, it, i think it i think it is it appropriate at channel only so uh user can see whenever he wants sure sure yeah yeah i or... understand i i absolutely understand and and i think on uh, google meet uh, only 100 participants can join so i i must have got probably 400 plus uh, comments saying that they want to join so probably most yeah. of them could not even join because of this uh, limit so yeah this video would help them yeah thank you thank you meer i'll try to do that 
yeah right, rahul but if you, you if you will upload this on uh, youtube so i guess you have to pay for it uh, because uh, more than 15 minutes i don't think we can upload oh is it <laughs> yeah acha okay then probably i have to charge for these sessions so that i can pay for <laughs> uploading or or as we can do that uh, we use a telegram uh, there is no restriction on telegram ओके बड़ी यार आई ट्राई टू डू दैट जस्ट गिव मी सम टाइम आई फिगर आउट समथिंग यार डोंट वरी आई आई ट्राई टू यू नॉट डू दैट आई आई फिगर आउट समथिंग डोंट वरी ओके ओके और एस और एस इफ नॉट दैट थिंग्स व्हिच हैपन देन देन इट इज ओके आल्सो बिकॉज़ वी कैन गेट आईडिया थ्रू दिस लाइक वंडरफुल सेशन thank you thank you all i mean i really appreciate and this was again a very impromptu thing because i myself am pl- planning to switch right so i i saw so many people uh, you know uh, putting their uh, post saying that they are looking for a job they want to find a job in automation so i thought uh, yeah. you know anyways i am going to practice for my interview <laughs> right yeah. so i thought yeah. you know maybe we all can you know study together like how we used yeah. to do in school right yeah. you know a group yeah. study <laughs> so i thought yeah. probably we'll group study on java selenium and things like that yeah. so and that was the intention yeah it's a great initiative of rahul really great one yeah thank and you thank even, you thank you and even for like uh, uh, whoever is working in to manual so uh, at least they can prepare for the interview related to automation through this video yeah 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 and again you know again i am not saying that i am the best in this particular field you know there are many yeah. free uh, youtube videos already there but probably you know uh, when we do live and when we have so many like minded people together it helps in in certain way so that was the only intention so yeah uh jansi yes. sriram is saying what, when can we expect api sessions uh, well uh, jansi uh, it will take some time yaar uh, you know this is just the basic that i have started so i will cover here i i mentioned in the post right what all things i'm going to cover so again i will keep on posting what topics i'm going to cover the next day so that whoever does not want to attend those sessions you know if they are already well versed with that you know they can skip that so if you are only specifically looking for api related stuff you know just keep an eye on that post i will keep on adding what topics i'm going to cover so if you want to join for api you can directly join over there okay but i wanted to start from the scratch especially for the manual testing folks you know so that it th- these sessions will help okay yes <laughs> definitely okay. yeah thank you thank you all uh, i don't want to take much of your time on a saturday night so thank you all i'll i'll see you all tomorrow okay thank you so much yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, you rahul, rahul. Bye. Thank you. bye thank you rahul bye bye, bye.